Good morning. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this session on the future of the High Street. My name's Damien Wilde, and I'm the editor of Estates Gazette. James, if I, if I can start with you, are reports of the death of the High Street exaggerated? My responsibilities, as you said, are across the whole of the European um, markets, and it varies across those markets just how the High Street is performing, but we've certainly examples, and there's a, my general manager here from Poland, where we have a very successful um, businesses in Poland and Germany and various markets where the high street is absolutely still performing strongly and performing very well. Justin, same question to you. Are those reports exaggerated? I think um, it's a little bit always difficult to generalise or dangerous to, to generalise. Um, certainly in the UK, in some locations, um, and let's talk about high streets and shopping centres as well in that context, um, the, the situation is very, very bad, both in terms of investment and occupation, and as you mentioned, um, vacancy rates have uh, have risen. So I think there is a there is in in some locations a real challenge, but but equally um, there are some really outstanding bright spots. It's tough, but uh, it's by no means um, uh, it's by no means the death of the high street. That there is there's, there's a natural order of change anywhere. There are long-term uh, long patterns of change with uh, shoppers preferring to shop in bigger centres where there's more choice. And it's not all to do with what we would point, point to is happening now, which is uh, consumer recession or, or low disposable incomes in the UK and, uh, and the structural change through the internet. So I think in the sense that it's all being blamed on those two things is exaggerated, but there are some, there are some serious problems and we will see some town centres or some high streets disappear almost completely uh, in the UK. You're on the high street and in, in out of town centres Both, as yeah, well. and online and in factory outlets. So we cover all the distribution channels and I think something for us that's critical to help the high street is to make those channels complementary. So we certainly use the online business to try and drive traffic to the stores. So it's, you know, they're, they're not in competition. I absolutely don't see them as being in competition. They should be complementary. Does it matter whether, whether high streets continue to thrive from a retail perspective or whether they change use or is there, is there something uh, slightly more nebulous and community spirited that um, requires them to survive? I, I don't think it's nebulous at, at all. I think it's massively important that they do survive and it's about inclusivity and accessibility for people, for communities to get to facilities, basic facilities, uh, which obviously includes retail. Uh, and I think it's incumbent on the public sector and people in our industry to support that. One of the things that we've skipped over here is, is convenience, and specifically the A word, the automobile, and how you handle traffic and people's ability to park. I have no doubt that, uh, that Westfield, uh, London, benefits greatly from the fact that people understand they can drive their car there, because even in the very connected urban realm that is London, people will get in their car and drive to the 4,000 parking places. And, uh, for instance, in the States, if, you know, the lessons learned are if you're looking at a development like that where you're developing a faux village, just behind the facade of the village are huge parking decks that then feed into the village and they offer that convenience. That, that kind of thing clearly has been made to work in America where we love air conditioning um, and a lot of places uh, you know, are either too hot or too cold. People still are shopping in those villages because they've got almost all of the convenience but the reality of being outside. And I Louis Kahn, uh, famous American architect, once said that the street was the living room by mutual consent. Everybody owned the street and that was the living room, but that started to die when you started to drive cars through it. But if you go to a dead end street, you still have that sense of, oh, this is that communal space and it's trying to get that back. And I, and I think, uh, you know, that sense of inclusivity and, and a sense of belonging to a greater community is, is critical. Justin, do you, do you agree with um, Mary Portis's phrase, the horse has bolted from some towns in the UK from a retail perspective? Uh, yes, I do. Um, and I think there are a number of elements to it. I think one element is, is the internationalization of the marketplace. So um, you are seeing brands that are looking uh, that they can, they can reach the UK market from fewer locations, um, and they're looking to new markets, um, new countries um, globally. Um, to find where they can actually make the profit. So I think, I think that is going to be a trend that, that is going to continue, and I think that's part of the, 
polarization argument, which is happening both in terms of brands, as I talk about, um, but also locations. I think you're going to see th those strong locations getting better and better. If the death of the high street is exaggeration, I think you've all um, signed up to the notion that it is in decline, perhaps not terminally so. I just wonder who bears most responsibility for slowing that decline and perhaps turning it around? Is it landlords, is it retailers, is it government, or is it in fact consumers who can exercise choice with their wallets? Mary James. Waters. Or Mary <laughs> Waters. <laughs> Uh, it, it's it's both. It's certainly the consumer that ultimately makes that decision, and that's 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 very much what we put at the heart of all of our decisions is is the consumer and try to do that whether that's high street, whether that's online. Um, but yeah, there's you know tough commercial decisions, and we're very very analytical about where we go and uh, which locations we do because because of the uh, the importance to our consumers about making the you know the brand and the the products available. Justin, who bears ultimate responsibility? I think we should avoid the uh, blame game, but um, what I do think is that there is a really interesting and, and very significant structural change in the market um, right now. I think that's global. I think it's touching consumers and occupiers and owners. Um, and, uh, and that change is what makes events actually like this um, so great. There has been an, an enormous amount of shopping centre floor space built um, and again, in the, in the UK, there's, a, there's nothing coming on stream, or virtually nothing over the next couple of years. And, and you know, that's a statement of, of how the market is there. Well, I, I agree with what's been said. It, it is down to consumers, because retailers uh, do what consumers want. We, as, as landlords, uh, do what retailers want. We, we put retailers together to provide what consumers want as well. So it all comes down to the consumer. But there is a hint of government in there, government and local authorities need to provide the framework within w which that is delivered. And there needs to be a very clear framework, a positive framework, and, uh, and, and then everybody will behave in a way which delivers uh, the right result. The, the behavior of retailers and uh, property developers is very predictable. It's easy, I think, for developers to develop their parcel of land. It's easy for the government to put a tax on that. It's very difficult for the the coincidence of uh, and general agreement uh, that what's good for society is good for everyone. And I think the importance of the high street shouldn't be left in a purely commercial discussion. So there's clearly a place for, for government in that. And as consumers, I think we're all responsible for the governments we, have, we elect and the decisions they make. And at the end of the day, uh, you know, we're all businessmen and, and recognize the commercial impulse. And, and I think it would be crazy to to ignore that, um, and it's just really about how to uh, how to affect the change that I think everybody's interested, which is maintaining that sense of community, and I think it starts with the individuals.